Good morning. Welcome to Planet Mojo. Today I'm going to show you how to kill a tree without cutting it down. Before I show you exactly how to do so, you might wonder why you would want to do so. In this case, this area right here, well, it, it stretches down about a quarter of an acre that way and a full acre that way. This area is being cleared of these weed trees that have grown up since the 1930s or so, 1940s in some cases, some cases later than that. What I need to do is kill these and I can either pull them out of here and burn them or, in this case, leave them standing and allow them to become habitat for woodpeckers and a host of other things live in these dead trees, bluebirds, whatnot. That hole right there probably would make a decent bluebird nest this spring. So in this area, I'm taking out basically all these trees and replanting it. You can't see it right now, but this area right here is all replanted with prairie grasses. This used to be an oak savanna, and you can actually see it on old aerial maps. The only trees that were here were these big ones. There's one here, one there, one there, one down there. There's a giant one right back in there. Uh, this walnut wasn't here, but that's pretty damn old. And this one here, but this one's dead. So this is a very endangered habitat, the oak savanna. And what it is is the transition between the plains where it was all prairie and the forested area on the eastern part of the United States. So it's where east and west meets. The prairie meets the trees this is the habitat that was here and the only reason it disappeared was because of farming and they stopped the fires that burn the prairies every once in a while what happened was the grasses would burn every once in a while and sometimes they were even lit by the native americans but lightning strikes and whatnot would burn these prairies and the white oaks would survive because they're very fire resistant and it would kill out all the other weedy trees. So I'm going to be reproducing that and spot burning here and there. But what I'm getting at is I can't leave all of the trees standing. I have to get rid of some of them, otherwise it'll be a huge fire hazard like they've created in like Australia and in California. You can't leave all that fuel just standing. So what I'm doing is in areas, I cut them down and stack them up into piles for habitat on the ground. And in some areas, I leave the trees standing like this. They get all holed up like this in a year. I'll show you one when I get that way uh, that it was just killed last year and it already has pretty deep holes in it. So that's the why. Another reason why you would want to do this is if you're clearing for a pasture and you don't want to use a dozer, which is really harmful to the soil. Doing it this way, you can kill the trees and let them stand for a while, and then the, slowly the branches just fall off and you have a standing dead tree. Again, you can go in there and slowly take them down, but if you wait two or three years, they're pretty nice and dry. So it's a good way to get fairly dry firewood as soon as you cut it down. So what I have here, you could see these little red flags all over the place. Most of these little trees were killed last winter with basil bark treatment which is roughly the same formula as this i'm going to do a hack and squirt with this today 
which is taking an axe and making a chop. You chop, now depending on the diameter of the tree, there's a formula for it, but I just play it by ear usually. You make some hacks around the base of the tree, or, you know, at a comfortable height, and then you squirt this stuff in. So it's hack and squirt. This was developed by the forestry department, I believe, but it, it's used by them all over the United States. Um, and they use it to clear, like, power line right of ways, except in some places like California, and which is how that one fire started last year, I believe. They weren't clearing the power line right of ways. And, uh, the dog is insisting that I play with her, but I can't. So what I'm going to do now is head to all these trees that are marked. They're all over in here. And hack and squirt them. Then I'm going to go down the rock road. And I have a few trees there that are right on the road that are blocking the oaks that I would rather grow there. They're weed trees like aspen and birch. And I'm going to hack a couple of them. So you'll be able to see the results of this come spring. This whole area in here I planted with a nurse grass, uh, perennial rye. That will slowly die back and I'll have little blue stem growing in its place. Little blue stem is the main grass, but there'll be a bunch of others in there. Indian grass, big blue stem, uh, switchgrass, the natural prairie grasses that grew here originally. Once the grasses are established, I'll add flowers and stuff, but I want to plant only grasses at first. That way I can kill back the noxious weeds with uh, 2,4-D. So, I guess I'm going to start right here and just move through this place. The dog's having a blast playing with her ball. Here's my first one. Hopefully, I have this aimed correct. And this is very atypical. I usually would not hack and squirt something this small, but I went through here in fall and found all the trees that were that were still living that needed to come out and marked them with this red. And some of them just happened to be little like that. Like I said, last year I went through and got rid of most of them little ones with basil bark treatment. And I'll do a video on that as well. I don't think I've done a video on that before. This one has all the blue markings on it because it is a baby white oak. And this will actually take up a huge space. It'll grow right over to that big one eventually. And that's how an oak savanna should be. Okay, hopefully I'm aimed right. So the recipe for this, I've put the recipe for this particular hack and squirt recipe. I put it in the comments, or not in the comments, in the description, as well as links. I got all this stuff on Amazon, but I can actually get this from uh, pretty much anywhere because I am a licensed applicator. See, this one's been hacked before, but the problem is some of these I hacked uh, in early spring last year, and that is probably the worst time to do it. It's best to do it in the winter when when the sap's not flowing really hard. Yeah, see this one too. It's got the hacks there. So once this area is restored, oops.
So once this area is restored, there are several endangered animals and plants that I hope to restore as well. And I would also like to get some nesting grouse and stuff. There's so little grasslands left that birds like the grouse, the ground nesting birds, kind of have a hard time finding places to nest. See, these were all bend this. Okay, hopefully this is aimed better. And this, some of these trees very well may have died anyway this year because they don't look very healthy under the bark there. I was going to take these these bands off as I go, but I just don't have enough hands to do it. See, this is a, a tree. I don't know if this was hacked and squirted or not. I doubt it. It looks like it's a, a white ash. But I will come in and cut these up. A lot of them I'll just stack. Some I'll burn. This I'll probably use for firewood. Again, I don't want to build up a big fire hazard. Especially right behind the house. Okay, I'm going to continue on and I'll get back with you down on the rock road. Okay, I'm out of my squirt formula and I've gotten all the trees and then some. I found some more uh, hawthorn, invasive hawthorn down in there and I got rid of that as well. These trees right here, this one and that one, I girdled two years ago. There's a video about that. I girdled these and this one all in one video. This one fell, I think it was just a month or two later after I girdled it. These uh, aspen really tend, to, once you girdle them, you know, this is about an inch in they snap real easy. I'm surprised this one isn't pretty rotted out yet, but once it hits the ground, these are these are rotten right away. But those are still alive. They're girdled even deeper. They're probably an inch and a half, and they haven't snapped yet either. And I hacked and squirted it last year. I think I did it in the spring though, so that's you know, it doesn't work very well in the spring when the uh, sap is flowing too much. So hopefully I ran out of out of the juice before I could go all the way around. Oops, this hill is just incredible slippery. I ran out of the juice before I could go all the way around on these. So I'll have to come back on my next pass. But I got all this done, and if you follow the channel, you'll be able to see, because they're still marked, I'll be able to see how effective this hack and squirt was. And like I mentioned earlier, the majority, or not the majority, maybe a third of these are going to be left standing, the bigger ones, so that they make habitat like that. That is a nice big hole. Uh, squirrels have their nests in those a lot as well. I found one that had fallen a couple years ago and it had a squirrel nest in it with babies. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for today. 
show you these big monsters while I'm down here. These are the oak savanna trees. That's a big one right there. And then one right there, one right there, and then there's one right there. That one, I believe, is the only red oak out of the bunch, and that got uh, oak wilt years ago. It's been dead for a while. It was dead before we put the tree fort in there. And now it's just too too rotten. To, we had to kind of abandon the tree fort because I'm trying to make a video here, puppy. We had to abandon the tree fort because it's not real safe anymore. <laughs> but anyways, I think I'm going to have to go play with her for a little while and sign off right now. So if you want to see the progress on this, I will come in here and walk through here and go to all these trees with, uh, with the bands on it and show what happened. I'll do that in the spring, just a couple months from now, as soon as they start leafing out. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon and then check all so you receive all the updates. Otherwise, you might miss it. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. I will have the recipe for this squirt mix, as well as a link to the axe. Uh, it's not an axe, a hatchet, and I got a sharpener with it at the same time, which works awesome. So I'll leave a link to that as well. And if you could give the video a like and share it, it would help us out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.